Okay guys, it's Matt from the past, and today I'm going to be doing the short talking part where I give an explanation about why I'm making this video. And I'm making this video to highlight and emphasize two basic survival points. And the first point is that personal shelter, or the shelter that's on your back or on your body, is the most important shelter possible. The second point is that survival or your odds of survival is hinged off of one singular point, and that is preventing, limiting, and overall escaping exposure. So let's talk about the first part. Now, in this video, I didn't construct any shelter because I wanted to highlight the fact that shelter, the most important shelter you have for your survival odds is on your back or around your body. Regardless to the time of year, the shelter that you have on your body, i.e. clothes, either needs to either work to prevent hypothermia or prevent hyperthermia, where you get too hot. This is the most core point, and while larger shelters, such as the shelters we've shown on this channel, can aid largely in preventing both hyper and hypothermia, the first and most important part or element to preventing or regulating homeostasis in your body is the stuff that you wear on and around your body. And this is the point that I wanted to create because so many YouTube bushcrafting and survivalist individuals out there, bless their hearts, create very extravagant tree houses or even just normal small cabin styled houses or even uh, shelters that you've seen on my channel such as the wiki up they are amazing shelters don't get me wrong but nothing can take away the fact in the most poignant part that the most important element to your personal survival in a real survival situation is not being able to build some extravagant or fancy shelter but it's to have the right and proper clothes on your back to begin with so the second part that ultimately ties into the first part is preventing and limiting and overall escaping exposure. Now, what do I mean by exposure? I mean two different types of exposure that are particularly deadly in most environments. Not all, but most environments. And these are wind and water. And once again, having the proper type of self-shelter or clothing can largely reduce the effects of wind on your body. That's why a lot of times you'll see me wearing my Arteryx Beta AR is because it is a very good shell jacket that limits wind coming to my core. And so the first thing that we want to try to limit is wind. Now it's also the hardest of the two to limit because in most places and most environments, especially Alaska, and depending on where you're at, you may not have many things naturally that barrier or barricade you from wind. And wind, unlike water, is more transient. You can't necessarily sit there and see a pool of wind and just walk around it. Wind comes and it hits you. So you have to take a more proactive uh, approach in dealing with wind. But wind, especially mixed with water, but even on itself, can cause hypothermia. And once again, it increases your risk of death by exposure. Now the second, like I said, is water. And water, by and large, is far more avoidable, especially if you're in a more traditional setting like the boreal forest that you see me in now. Now, like I said, you can take active steps to avoiding water, but the biggest point that I want to stress when it comes to water is not obviously falling in a river or falling into an ocean or a lake or a pond or anything. Obviously, we can all see and visualize that that is going to lead to you becoming wet and obviously potentially hypothermic if you don't have the right type of course or action afterwards. That's very easy to avoid. What I wanna talk about is exposure via moisture or water that's more insidious, something that you don't necessarily take into account until you feel the effects of it. And maybe this is just my own personal stupidity or clumsiness, but one of the biggest ones that I take in, that I usually forget or 
lose caution over, especially in times like spring or after a large fall of water, is things such as puddles or muddy areas. And getting things like feet and hands and different parts of the body wet uh, limitedly. Once again, it's easy to sit there by a lake and say, oh yeah, I'm not going to just jump or fall into a lake because obviously then I would get very wet and it would be a problem. However, we can, as humans, lose a lot of heat and we do lose a lot of heat through our feet and through our head. Those are our primary areas unless you're touching things with your hands uh, those are the or your body. Those are the primary ways that we lose heat. And so when you get things like your feet wet, you may not think anything of it in the beginning, but it ends up during nightfall coming back to haunt you and plague you, requiring things such as fires to be started, requiring things, outside factors to play into your survival. So these are the two points that I primarily wanted to hit upon with this video, is talking about how we can limit exposure and how our best defense, our best shelter, is the stuff, the clothes that we choose to wear. And this is really important that whenever you go out as a survivalist, bushcrafter, hunter, hiker, it's important to take a look at the forecast. It's important to understand what terrain you're going into. It's important to gauge clothing properly. And I don't just mean gauge clothing appropriately for the time that you think you will be there, but for the time that you may have to be there. Essentially saying that it may be 70 above right now, which it's not sadly, but it may be 70 above right now, but what is your nighttime looking like? Because I know in Alaska we have very large swings here where it may be 70 above in the daytime when the sun's hitting us, and then it might creep right back down to 32, 30 above at night. Are you wearing adequate equipment and <clears throat> clothing to shelter and weather through 30 above. Even though it is 70 right now, it won't always be. And so these are the types of uh, effects and factors that we need to look at in, instead of just being awestruck and mesmerized by some fancy cool shelter. In addition to the last point that I want to make is that the core and heart of survival is living in the land, off the land, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be extravagant. I think that there's an illusion, maybe a little bit of a delusion, going on in the survival world on YouTube of grandeur and making everything great and making everything just over the top. And once again, if you have the supplies, the equipment, the training, and the time and resources and all that to make a treehouse or another amazing shelter, then you can certainly do it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but don't get wrapped around the axle and just confused or don't necessarily feel like that has to be the only way you can go. Survival is not about living comfortably. It's about surviving and practice of survival should reflect that. And so I get really fed up when watching YouTubers that try so hard to make just these absolute spectacular, you know, almost really spectacles of survival and bushcrafting. And it's just lost or walked so far away from the heart of what it truly means to live out in the wilderness. Anyways, guys, that is all I have to say. Enjoy the rest of this video. And as always, God bless. And I'm